Hey there. So later on this week, we've got the new moon in Scorpio taking place on November the 1st, 2024. Um, in this video, I'm going to be looking at the um, overall planetary uh, picture for the new moon and also in part two, looking at the asteroids, um, trans-Neptunian dwarf planet type activity um, that might also be playing into it and also giving you a Sabian symbol message for it too. Um, so the entirety of this is to explore the new moon at um, three different levels. So you get to, you know, um, understand it from different perspectives. I really think the planetary picture gives us um, a very sort of normative understanding of it, you know, like how is it appearing right now in our world. The asteroids, I think, give us um, a bit of a pull back to mythology um, and a cheeky little look at things that might um, also have some significance. I've, I have included one asteroid that I'd never heard before, heard from before. Um, but when I did a quick search of the name, I thought, oh, that could have some relevance. So I've put it in just as an experiment. Um, and then the Sabian symbols, um, you know, I've put in the Sabian symbol for this particular new moon, really to see what it's representing and, and what more of a, a karmic, cosmic um, and kind of far out spiritual um, message might be contained there as well. So welcome to this channel. If you're new, my name's Louisa. Um, and the whole purpose of this channel is to explore um, astrology from a perspective of creating greater freedom for ourselves, feeling like we've got more space to breathe and be ourselves. So let's get cracking. So the first thing I really wanted to um, draw your attention to is, you know, where is the new moon happening in your chart? So it's happening on November the 1st at 12.47 p.m. That's London, UK time. Um, I'm actually in the same time zone as London, UK. I'm near Lisbon in Portugal. Um, but this new moon is happening at 9 degrees 35 in, in the sign of Scorpio. So if, you, if you're able to look at your birth chart, my first question to you is like, where is this in your chart? So for instance, for me, uh, my ascendant is at 12 degrees in the sign of Scorpio. So for me, this new moon is just happening just before it, but very, very close to the ascendant. So it's it's super close. Um, but like, for instance, if your Scorpio is maybe around the sixth house, then this new moon may very well be in your sixth house. So have a little think around um, where it is. Um, each of these houses has a very different feel to it. Um, you know, and 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 there are lots of different as astrological videos that you can look at um, to get a real sense of, um, you know, what that might mean. Um, in my week ahead forecast, I have spoken about the new moon um, in, you know, according to your ascendant sign. So, for instance, if you know your ascendant sign, you could get a little description of where this new moon is Um on Friday, the 1st of November, all you have to do is just listen to your ascendant sign in the current week ahead forecast. But anyway, wherever it's showing up, it's highlighting a new start, you know, a, a feeling of a new possibility. You know, this, you know, the, the new moons are representing, um, you know, the start of a new growth period. You know, this is the idea of what you might be building on, what you might have um, envisage is this might come from a heart yearning, a soul yearning, um, and be something that you're ready to put into practice or ready to grow. So I really think this is very, very helpful for people that are wanting to do something new. Um, really, really helpful. So like the next thing we might want to consider is, well, it's in the sign of Scorpio. What are the themes of Scorpio? Again, I spoke about the themes of Scorpio uh, at quite um, a great length um, in my week ahead forecast. Um, taking you from Monday, the 28th of um, October, right the way through to the 3rd of November, Sunday, the 3rd of November. So check that out if you want some more. But, you know, here are some of the keywords I consider to be um, absolutely key themes with Scorpio that might be coming up for you around this time of the new moon. Um, so intimacy is, is one. Um, strength, power. I, I can't believe I missed that one. <laughs> power, intimacy, strength. Intuition, you know, like the, the Scorpio energy has a really strong hunch. You know, it has very, very strong visceral hunches about things. Um, very much about trust and loyalty. There's, um, 
you know, the the Scorpio, um, like a, a traditional Scorpio type person absolutely demands trust and loyalty. And so, you know, you'll be looking at how you can foster more of this um, with this new moon. It really considers magic and manifestation. I think there's a lot of power, like transformative power with the sign of Scorpio. So it's very magical, very manifestatory. And I think it also represents our, do, our deepest superpower. Now, that might come from one of your darkest secrets. You know, I, I really think there's a dark to light kind of energy with Scorpio, you know, and, you know, if you have a strong Scorpio in your chart, like, for instance, if you're born with the sun in Scorpio, the moon in Scorpio or ascendant Scorpio, then this will be really, really strong for you. Um, so the idea of from dark to light, you know, so you're working on your core issues and then bringing them some relief. You, you're, you're relieving yourself. The idea of resurrection, you know, um, the sign of Scorpio is the eighth sign. Um, and, you know, it, it's not the same as the eighth house, but there are some similarities, I would say, with the eighth house themes. You know, the eighth house is known as a place of secrets. It's also the place of birth, life and death and, and the whole sort of resurrection cycle. Um, it's also about taxes and um, uh, shared funds that you have with people. So I really think it also picks up on value systems that we share with other people, in particular, the, th the stuff we take on because of other people. You know, the eighth house and also Scorpio are, are known for um, getting into situations where there might be bullying or abuse, you know, so they might be the victims of um, kind of confusion and manipulation. You know, the, the theme of Scorpio, um, it, you know, Scorpio is known to be ruled by both Pluto and Mars. And the energy of, of Pluto can be very manipulative. You know, it, it, it may well go to great lengths to get its own way, whereas Mars is a bit more straightforward. It, you know, it, it will um, sting you. <laughs> if you do anything wrong by its values, it will sting you, it will come and get you. Um, that's very sort of like straightforward Mars kind of energy. So there's a whole heap of things going on. So again, you know, if you know where this is in your chart, um, you know, and if you don't check out my forecast, um, and if you can think around that part of your chart and think, well, how does that fit in with my own sense of power? Um, my own sense of intimacy, my need to feel more trust and loyalty with people or situations in life, you'll, you'll get a real kind of key look at it. But the deeper superpower, I think, is, is something um, really important. So, for instance, something that you might have, you know, felt that you were a bit ugly about or wrong about or rubbish about, like something that isn't, you know, like maybe something you've been criticized about that you have very strong visceral emotions about these, I think, often show us what our true gift is and what we're really here to explore. And so I think, you know, the, the power of Scorpio, um, especially the new moon in Scorpio, can be to come to terms with what it is we really don't like about ourselves, you know, because Scorpio has strong feelings. So what don't you like about yourself and how you can transform that becomes a superpower in its own right. So again, think about how that can fit in with your chart. Um, Aside from, um, you know, just these like keywords, here's some other things to think about with this new moon. So at the time of the new moon, there's not much going on, actually, between the sun and the moon. You know, they are exactly together in the sign of Scorpio, but they are making a trine to Saturn. Now, I really like it when um, we've got a connection between the moon, the sun and Saturn. Um, and I've mentioned this in so many different videos before, but there's this fantastic book that I've had for maybe, maybe 30 years, um, 20 to 30 years, um, called Astrology in the Games that People Play. And it's about triastral astrology. Um, it's written by someone, I think, um, called Spencer Grand, uh, Grenfell, I think. Um, uh, I'll, I'll post the, the name of the full book, but it's brilliant. And, and he talks about transactional analysis. This is the idea of um, um, parent, adult, child, you know, like different archetypes or different expressions of our, ourselves. You know, we all have a childlike expression. We all have an adult self. We all have a kind of parental, even if we're not parents, we all have this kind of um, grown up um, that we channel. And in this book, um, it's likened Saturn to being the parent, 
the sun to being the um, adult and the moon being the child. And so you can often see, um, you know, in your own astrology, um, in your own birth chart, which of those three planets is the strongest, which has the most um, uh, connections, which has the most aspects, which um, which is strongest by sign and position and stuff like that. So you can see which which mode you are much, much more comfortable with. And of course, each of those things, like the child, you can have a very passionate and caring and um, adventurous child, or you might have a spoilt child or a fearful child, you know, um, a very sort of um, disruptive child, a, a rebellious child. You might have a really good adult self where you can articulate yourself really beautifully, that you're naturally assertive, you're confident, you know who you are. Or you could have um, maybe a, a, a deep lack of confidence. And, and again, the chart can show that. Um, Saturn also can, you know, there are beautiful parents out there who, who become mentors, who become coaches, guides. Um, you know, they don't even have to be your adults, but, you know, there are lots of people who are very good at adulting and very good at taking on responsibility and very good at helping other people reach their potential. And yet there's also penalizing parents, you know, so that, that sort of penalizing kind of judgmental side can come out as well but you know seeing this chart is to me and, and seeing that um the sun and the moon are together so they're um they're not really sovereign in their own right um though i do i do like new moons but it's suggesting that there might be a bit of um an overlap between the child and the adult side you know so i mean if you think about the child and the adult in 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 your own life like you as an individual you know when i think of my child i think of my dreamer and then when i think of my adult i think of the realist in me and the the person that has the drive to get things done so you know you could you know with with these two together this can really show you how your dreamer your creative side can absolutely help dream up a new plan for yourself. The fact that this is so beautifully connected, both of them to Saturn, I think is showing that we can have the guidance, we can find the supervision, we can find um, helpful judgments, you know, or, or, you know, pieces of, of advice. There may well be people around us that are there to illuminate our path and just to show us a little bit more and a little bit more. We might, we might be doing that to ourselves. So I see this as, as being a really healthy, um, a bit of programming or planetary programming, planetary weather for the day of November the 1st when we've got this new moon in Scorpio. So again, I take you back to my first question. Where is it in your chart? Is it in an important place? Because if it is, um, and, you know, and, and it might be like touching something in your chart. If it's, if, if it's touching one of your planets, it's going to really relieve and activate that planet with a sense of a new beginning, a sense of a new possibility. And with this lovely um, connection to, to Saturn, you've also got the feeling of support that you can either support yourself or there's new support coming to you. So I love that. Now, there is um, astro.com bless it it does put in quite wide orbs um uh you know i'm i'm guessing you know what an orb is but for instance um a square um is an aspect that happens um when one planet is 90 degrees away from another but um all of the programs and, and astrologers use orbs because very rarely is anything ever exactly 90 degrees or 180 degrees in an opposition but we have these orbs, these allowances either side. So, you know, um, I, I would go with an orb of eight degrees. Um, Astro.com has used a, an orb of 10 degrees. And, and so this is showing up as a square. Now, whilst I think the orb is a bit too wide, um, in my opinion, given that the new moon is in the sign of Scorpio, and Scorpio is, according to whether you're modern or traditional, you know, Scorpio has two rulers or could do um, according to your um, your ideas. Um, but it's ruled by both Mars and Pluto. So even though I think that orb is a little bit too wide, knowing that this new moon in Scorpio is in um you know, a, a wide square to Pluto, I think that makes it relevant. And so I'm including it back in the game. <laughs> so we then also think about the new start opportunities that we've got for ourselves and how might that work with us? Well, 
Pluto is about transformation and it's it's showing our power. It's it's showing our ability to um, take the next step um, and and to be really courageous in what we're trying to achieve. Now, um, interestingly, um, it's just out of out of a square again here, you know, because um, Pluto is at this time in an it, it, almost in exact opposition with with Mars. And so you could have this T-square here. Um, there is a, a T-square coming up, like there, there are T-squares that are coming in um, during this week ahead, but it's not really exact. But the, I think the theme is there that we've got this new moon potential um, dancing in between this Pluto and Mars opposition. Um, now, I did speak about Pluto and Mars in their opposition in this week ahead forecast. So again, if this is something that is 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 really in your mind right now, if you haven't seen that forecast, check it out because it could really, really help you understand that. But the square to um, Pluto, I think, is showing you the lengths that you'll go to to get your needs met, you know, in terms of this new idea, the new project. To me, it, it's showing that you, you've got the ability to work really, really hard to put in so much effort to um, maybe even make sacrifices to be able to achieve something that you truly believe is going to um, transform your life and, and to turn it around. In particular, go back to the ideas of dark to light, uh, the idea of resurrection, you know, after... Um, you know, like um, I always think, you know, it's always darkest before dawn. So we really do have some very strong potentials here. And then if we were to um, say, well, you know, <laughs> this is so close to, you know, it really does feel a bit like a square here as well. You know, it, it's showing that although you can guide yourself with this new moon, you are going to need to put in some hard work. You know, this isn't something that comes for free. This isn't an opportunity, the opportunities you're creating for yourself aren't opportunities where you just have the idea and then sit back and expect it all to manifest. You know, this is showing that, I mean, you might be coming up to the fight of your life. And whilst that sounds pretty scary to some people, it could actually be very empowering. You know, this might be the, the real time where you realize, do you know what, it ends here. You know, I've, I've put up with you know, this X, Y, and Z all of my life. And yet now I feel completely responsible, the Saturn. I feel completely able to inspire myself and find my direction. And I know that it's going to take hard work and I've got this, I'm going to do this. So I, I think this is really deeply strong. I, I love it. Um, then the, the sun and the moon aren't really connecting to anything else. But something else that I think is important on that day is this ongoing trine. Again, I mentioned it in the week ahead forecast, so check that out. Um, but we've got Mercury, we've got Mars, and we've also got Neptune all working in a really beautiful um, grand water trine. So we've got the dream. Um, we've got the mental capacity to work with that dream and that in intuition. And we've got the physical strength to pull it off as well. So again, there's this this beautiful, it's like mind, body, spirit. Um, these three working together in the water sign. So again, there is this natural ability to work with feelings, a natural to ability to work with spirit, um, with healing, with our emotions, with our the way we relate to people. So I think this is absolutely um, full of healing potential. You know, it, it wouldn't surprise me if you've got a very strong Scorpio, something going on in your chart, that you might be going through a very big healing and clearing process right now. Um, so yeah, I, I really love this opportunity. I, I love these. Um, the, I love this layout, even though we've got this very tricky um, Pluto and Mars opposition. What a great place for it to start at. You know, I mean, it's almost at its um, e most exact point. Two days on from the new moon, um, they are exact, um, forming, you know, the first of three oppositions for a period of um, up to six months, I think, you know, from the real start to the real end. Um, I, I think this is significant that we've got this new moon. Um, and again, if you think of the new moon, we have the sun that is. Um, light. We have the moon that is dark. You know, there is this uh, this idea of taming 
the left and the right, taming the right and the wrong in us, taming the light and the dark. I see this as a, a great big integration, um, you know, where we can really find some significant balance. Um, so I, I've got a, a lot of hope for this, even though it's happening um, at such um, a strong time in the world right now. Let's have a look at the asteroids and see what else is coming from, um, you know, how we can look even deeper. So um, I use serenu.com, S-E-R-E-N-N-U.com. Um, and you can easily go there and put in the time and date and place of a birth chart. That's what I did with this new moon. I put in November the 1st, 1247 London. Um, and then it will bring up up to a thousand different asteroids. And I pick the ones that are most aligned. Um, I'm not really looking for trines or anything like that. I'm looking for ones that are, are presenting with really dynamic connections, i.e. in a square or in an opposition. And the most um, the most exact aspect was with an asteroid called Bernie. Now, I, I think we can have fun with asteroids. Um, and there's this great website. I think it's called Alex's Asteroid Astrology. Um, and Alex, he he does loads of investigations. If something happens around the world, he looks um, at birth charts and he puts in loads of different um, asteroids. Um, that, that maybe represent the things like, for instance, if, if somebody died in an unusual way, he, you know, um, a bit like um, Cluedo, that board game, he would put in an asteroid to represent Mrs. Plum in the library with um, a candlestick. You know, he would find all the relevant asteroids. And there are over like 20,000 um, asteroids you can choose from, named asteroids. Um, so I've never really come across asteroid burning before. It's never been... Um, you know, it's never been relevant to me, but I wonder if it will have some relevance. So I've put this in as a, a wild card and I did a quick um, look at Bernie just to see what's coming up. I do recognize that there are like there is a place in Texas called Bernie. It's spelt completely differently. B-O-E-R-N-E, -E, I believe. Um, so, and so, again, even though it's not spelt the same way, if it's got the same sound, I still think that that also is a match, you know. But what occurs to me is I wonder if something to do with Bernie will come out in, in resonance or somehow hit the news. Recently, I was using asteroids with um, um, with with a, a client and for some reason I'd put in, um, what was it, Bighorn. And I'd never, ever used asteroid Bighorn before, but I was using it and it was so weird because it was very, very prominent th at that time with um, the, the, the planets. And lo and behold, that same week, uh, my client got in back in touch and said, Oh my goodness, did you hear about this? And then on the news, I heard something about a place called Bighorn. So, you know, these things do come up in, in, in resonance. So I'm, I've, I've put this in here just for like kind of giggles really to see what happens. So here are three ref references just from a Google search, um, about Bernie. So there's the Bernie Falls in Shasta Park, California, um, which I think are some, big um, waterfalls, um, you know, Shasta Park area. So I wonder if there will be something about that coming up around the time of the new moon. We'll, we'll find out. There's a lady called um, Fanny Burney, um, who is um, really old now, um, maybe not even with us. I, I don't know. Oh, I hope I, I, haven't, I hope I haven't upset somebody who's still alive. Please forgive me. <laughs> um, but um, Fanny Burney is known to be the originator of Chick Lit, you know, like the idea of, um, you know, novels for women, you know, to to in, enjoy sort of maybe romantic and erotic literature. And so th there is um, a bit of a nod towards chick, chick lit, you know, so I don't know if that's something that's important in your life. But there's also Judge Robert McBurney from Fulton County Court. And of course, there's loads of stuff going on with election at the moment. Um, so I just thought, oh, let's put that judge in as well. You know, who knows what will come up, but it's interesting. It's exactly in opposition to, um, the new moon. Like I said, I've just put it in for, um, an example and we can use our eagle eyes and just, just find out if anything comes up or if it has any relevance to you, but in opposition to the new moon, it's interesting. It's almost like whatever is going on here is somehow in opposition to change. Um, you know, maybe 
um, like this, this, this opposing part of the new moon is, is a place of chaos. Um, it's, it's a place where things aren't starting new and afresh, you know, cause what you get really with a new moon is I think you get the start of a new pattern, you know, like a new seed is, is growing. You, you, you've got something that's very coherent, um, and new and fresh that is growing. And, you know, I, I really see that this spot here is the antipathy of that, you know, it's, it's, it's not fresh. It's not, um, um, it's not new necessarily. It's not organized and coherent. You know, I get the feeling that something maybe chaotic might be going on um, with Bernie, whatever that is, is representing to you. So I've just put it in. But then there are three um, cosmic, um, uh, cosmic bodies that I want to talk about. And the, the first one that I want to to pay some attention to is Varuna, which on serenu.com is listed as a trans-Neptunian object, a TNO. Um, uh, and other people might have it as a dwarf planet. I know somebody, um, I'm in touch with somebody from the UK, Amanda, thank you for your help, by the way, um, who is studying dwarf planets with somebody called Adam Clay from New Zealand. And so I dropped her a line and said, can you tell me a bit about Varuna? Because, you know, I, I could have researched it myself, but I, I always think it's more in like interesting to hear from people about what they've experienced of it. So Varuna, and this is the number to find it if you wanted to put it on astro.com, just like Bernie's um, identification number is 6235. This one is um, uh, 20,000. It says Varuna is the higher level of Saturn. And if you remember, Saturn's quite important in this the higher level of Saturn of mastery consciousness through devoting ourselves to something so deeply, we claim sovereignty through vast experience. So when I think of that, I think of the magnitude of how deeply we could go into something and, and the kind of energy it might take to do something, the the love that must come from wanting to master something. You know, it, it says through devoting ourselves to something so deeply, we claim sovereignty. So I, I see this as mastery consciousness. Um, Amanda also said recognition of our gift that we wish to bring into this lifetime. So this new moon could absolutely um, be triggering an experience where all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's funny that I was talking about your deepest superpower. You know, you might be realizing there's there's something going on at a really really deep level that is quite uncomfortable but it's something that you're ready to devote yourself to um to move beyond that you know to come into a mastery consciousness about it so this is amazing this is such a an interesting place now it's not harmonious it's it's in a it's in a square so we might not be able to recognize it straight away it might be something that comes in and we feel uncomfortable about initially um, so I would absolutely say around the time of the new moon, leading up to the new moon, because Rune is very slow moving, um, notice what you're feeling uncomfortable about. Um, and, and then ask yourself, is this something I, I need to learn? Is this something I'm ready to devote myself to? Um, Varuna, he's the god of the waters and a reminder of our deep emotions that are vast and unchangeable in nature. I love that, especially given that you know, this is a water new moon and that we've got this water grand trine and also the new moon in water is also um, in a trine to um, Saturn, which is, I would say, the terrestrial level of consciousness, you know, like of mastery and devotion. Um, not everyone would agree with me with devotion, but, you know, a lot of hard work can come up and a lot of lessons can come up with Saturn. So Saturn is very terrestrial in that respect. But Varuna is, um, you know, a high end version of that. You know, this is the higher consciousness of that. So this is very, very amazing. I love that. And then we've got to add in, or we don't have to, but I'm choosing to add in Pandora, you know, and, and so, you know, one thing I will say, you know, whenever we have these lunations, like these new moons, and then the full moons or the eclipses, I think they, that degree that they come in on is very, very special. 
and lasts until the next lunation comes in. So you might go new, new moon to new moon. I, I would consider um, new moon to full moon to new moon to full moon. Um, so I, I think this nine degree is 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 really important. Um, you know, it's it's in fact, you know, like if 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 this is touching something in your chart quite significant, like for me, it's it's in a conjunction with my ascendant. This is important to me. I would say this degree of nine, de you know, degrees of Scorpio, you could even hold on to that as the idea until the next new moon in Scorpio comes and kind of cancels it out, you know, until the next opportunity to delve into a new start in the sign of Scorpio. So, you know, I, I love looking at these degrees, at these these special points, these these moments in time. There is something to be revealed. So this isn't just a, a one day event you know, this could have a much bigger event. And that's, and the reason I'm mentioning that is because Pandora, you know, if you look at the idea of Pandora's story, the mythology, um, and it, originally Pandora had a jar, which was later turned into a box, but Pandora's box or jar was noted as containing all of the miseries of earth. And she was told not to open the box because if she opened the box, all of a sudden, all the miseries of the earth would come out and, and we'd all perish and it would be awful. But her curiosity got the better of her and she opened the box and all the miseries flew out. But then she managed to get the lid back on. And the only thing that was inside the box or jar that stayed was hope. So like when all hope is lost or it looks like all hope is lost, actually, there is still hope, you know. <laughs> um, so what this is saying to me is there's something around the timing of this new moon. And of course, you know, there's a flipping great big election um, taking place four days later um, and a whole heap of really big astrology starting up around this time, in particular with this Pluto and Mars opposition. Um, to me, I think there is this feeling of, um, uh, I, I suspect a lot of people are going to be thinking that A, we're not innocent anymore. We're coming out of innocence. We, you know, we can't unknow what we know. Um, there is, I, I really do understand the the term ignorance is bliss. I, I used to hate that term when I was a, a child because I, I, I thought it was everyone's responsibility to know stuff. I now realize, you know, if people choose to, to stay ignorant to things, actually, you know, I, I used to find I didn't have much time for people who stayed ignorant for things, but actually bless them. You know, they, they might be doing themselves a favor. They might realize actually the world is a better place when we can be blissful and, and not aware of what's going on. But that awareness, once we've got that awareness, we can't then forget that awareness, you know? So to me, this is an indication that we are possibly collectively coming into an awareness that is painful. The, we're coming into an awareness where we no longer can see the world in in such easy terms. I remember having a kind of not an awakening as such, um, because I don't consider myself to be a fully awoken person. You know, I, I think it's an ongoing process. But, you know, I, I remember going through a, a period of time when a lot of things became very in my face and I couldn't ignore them anymore. And I realized that the world that I thought I was living in was really different. And I remember sort of yearning back to the eighties, you know, where the eighties music felt a bit safe and, and it just reminded me of being a child and having my needs met or mostly met. Um, you cannot go back into that innocent state. You know, once we come out, once we grow up, um, and we're always growing up, no matter how old we are, um, it, it's difficult. So to me, this is talking about, um, I've spelt curiosity wrong there. Damn it. <laughs> but what, what's coming up for me here is that we can no longer hide under illusions, you know, however, and this is the most important part of the message. I think hope remains, you know, um, we all have our eyes wide open. Hope is not lost. We might be shocked but hope remains. And that is the important part. So we've got hope remaining and we've also got Varuna, the higher level of mastery consciousness. You know, we can devote ourselves to something so deeply. We are claiming sovereignty through our vast experience. Again, you can't have vast experience if you've got your eyes shut. You, you just can't simply do that. You know, you have to experience things to have vast experience. 
And it's in this struggle that we're recognizing our gift that we wish to bring into this lifetime. So I really get the feeling that we're all in a bit of a boot camp right now. Um, and again, what I would say is if this is in an important part of your chart, you're about to go through some really significant changes, most likely where you feel like um, you are rapidly growing um, and where things are possibly a bit uncomfortable. And yet this is part of your journey. You know, hope remains and you are coming into um your unchangeable nature. You are coming into your vast experience. You are coming into your mastery consciousness. So I hope that gives you a little bit of faith around that. And then the last thing, um, karma is also there. So I don't know if you believe in karma or not. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it myself. Um, I do still think like choice is really important. Um, and you know, how far do I think things are mapped out? Um, I like to think that, you know, we have our opportunity to choose and also work with a blueprint as well. But anyway, if you think of karma, like the idea of fate or destiny resulting from one's previous actions, um, to me, this is uh, like when you combine all of this, this is that we are claiming sovereignty through vast experience. Uh, our eyes are open. They cannot be shut hope is not lost. And in some way, this is a catch up because of where we have put our energies so far in life. Um, and it might not just be our own karma, but the collective karma. So this might have something to do with our, how we are in, you know, as, as humans, you know, are we just concerned with our own business or do we get involved in other things? Are we, are we here to inspire other people? Are we trying to uplift each other? Are we working on something that is um, beyond what would bring us our own peace? You know, because anywhere where we've um, gone through some big choices and um, we've taken very strong previous actions, we're going to be getting the sense of um, it all catching up with us. And that could be really wonderful, you know, like the realization of, of what has been and what is coming in. Um, but there might also be some pain. You know, we might realize that we've closed our eyes down to some things. Um, and maybe that's added to the collective human um, conundrum. You know, we, we are all working and creating at the same time. We're all living um, and creating it at the same time. And that's going to cause all sorts of little chain reactions all over the world. So what this is also bringing up to me is we're in this together. And we are going through a vast collective shift. Uh, I, you know, I didn't know where this was going when I was looking at these slides earlier. <laughs> it's only when I start reading that it all comes out and I go, oh, <laughs> I didn't quite realize how this, you know, how important this feels to me. So again, you know, I, I really think we're in this together um, and, and it feels like what we're all going through right now, there is this recognition that this is a deep time of learning um, and, and coming back together. So even though the world might, um, try to persuade you that we're all against each other in, in so many different ways, I actually think we're coming back together again. And I, I'm quite happy about that. And, and in the coming back together, it might look a bit clunky, um, because integration is always really clunky. Um, so this is the new moon in Scorpio at nine degrees and Sabian symbols. Um, and it relates with a fellowship supper reunites old comrades. Isn't that interesting that I was just talking about things coming back together? Now, I've taken this from Linda Hill's fantastic website, which is called www.sabiansymbols.com. I really recommend you go there, check out your symbols for your sun, your moon, your ascendant, and so on and so forth. I've done a couple of shows with her about them. Um, check those out. They're really quite helpful. Um, when you go to her site, you, you put in the degree that you're looking at, um, so you'll see here, um, it's nine degrees, 35. So you put nine degrees of Scorpio hit enter and it will bring up, um, your, your, um, your Sabian symbol. Now they get rounded up. Um, so this is, if, if we were to look at this on Linda's actual website, it'd be called, um, Scorpio 10. Um, because it's been rounded up. But anyway, this symbol shows getting together with people with shared visions and histories, which can be very rewarding and renewing. A fellowship supper 
can help connect with old friends or provide a place for meeting new ones. Often with this degree, issues around food come up, whether it's providing food or drink or sharing it with others. It's important to find time to socialize with like-minded people as true friendships can come from simple gatherings. Also, there can be there can often be the sense that one's known people before on a karmic level, interesting karmic link here, or stretching back into a past life. True fellowship and fraternity can bring a sweet sense of nostalgia and uplift to each individual's lives. Renewed bonds, feeling like you've known each other before, reunions and memories, past life connections, fated meetings, the last supper, reaching out to others. So yeah, this to me is an indication that even though we're going through these very polarized times um, where um, the news media um, and well, yeah, just, just so much that we see on online right now would have us believe that we're all falling apart, maybe in a weird way we're falling back together. Um, and whether we're going to see it in the next two weeks, the, the next month or by the next Scorpio new moon, who knows? Um, and even, you know, uh, according to how quickly we see that coming back together, that could vary from person to person because who is to say um, what level we all have to get to before we feel like we're all coming back together. But to me, it feels like there's a consensus that is brewing. There is something that's coming up where people are are coming back together and sticking together and remembering their connections, remembering their past together. Um, so this you know, I, I, I'm excited by this. This feels deeply strong. Um, and, and it feels like there's a lot of renewal. Um, so really what I want to just say in my last couple of minutes is just to thank everyone that supports this channel. Really, truly thank you. Um, and you can support this channel in, in any way that you like, um, with helpful comments, with shares. If you want to donate something like these guys have, feel free. Um, there's different ways and it's all mentioned below. But, you know, to everyone that supports this and sends me kind of good good vibes, healing vibes and stuff, I really, really thank you because you're helping this um, become something, you know. And if this has touched, moved or inspired you, then that's that feels really, really good to know. So thank you so much. Final, final thought then, you know, the thing I think that has really struck me the most is this is in our hands, you know, Mars, uh, sorry, the sun and the moon and Saturn. This is our parent, adult and child within us. We are all three and we're integrating them. We are finding the way to make our inspirations um, and, uh, you know, what we would like to manifest for ourselves. We are finding the inner guidance in ourselves. And I don't think anyone can take that away from us. So there you go. That's my final thought. Have a fantastic new moon. And if I can be any help to you in unraveling your chart um, and finding the magic in it, then simply just get in touch. All of my details are below. Sending you loads and loads of love. Have a good one and catch you real soon. Bye for now.